You'll come in, Sir Rook. Welcome back, everyone. So we continue on in our journey of full paint and body work from start to finish on this 1984 Porsche 911 Cabrio. If you didn't see the first episode, we started with panel alignment and got about halfway through the bodywork. And so now we're going to resume this process. If you haven't done so already, please give us a like and subscribe. It really helps a lot. And so with that, let's get started. And then here we've got just this depression little area here, and that's from more than likely people pushing the hood down, pressing right here, which is no good, but that's what happened. And so, and so these little glossy areas that are still there, I'm gonna rough that up before, and then I'm gonna apply a little filler over this area. And there's that high spot. So here I'm doing another pass of sanding of the filler, followed by the application of another skim coat to fill in where needed. All this sanding and filler application can be repetitive. I like to break it up over a few days and uh, maybe just come out and do an hour or so a day. Okay, so now in this area, we're sanding it, and we're starting to get some high spots here with of metal. So at this point, I can do one or two things. So I could either fill it and blend up filler to cover this, or I can just knock these down. And so what I'm going to do is I'd like to keep keep the body in its pure shape as much as possible, then I'm just going to go ahead and knock these down right here. And just flatten those a little bit. Um, I do have also in my stash of tools, this tool here, this is um, a tool by, by Ingersoll Rand, and um, it's an air file, so you have to plug it in with air, and this can make your, your work go a lot faster.
This next bit, what I'm doing here, this is applicable to uh, really doors and any f long flat areas that you have. I took uh, a, a four foot level and I taped on some 40 grit sandpaper on that. And by that, I'm able to rough shape the, the whole door and really remove all the waves. The long level is used because it spans across the entire damaged area and really helps us to eliminate the waviness. If you used a smaller file, then you would only achieve this in a localized sense, not really across the whole panel. It's much better looking if we can get the whole panel flat and leveled across it. That way, when you look down the side of it, you don't notice that there are waves starting in the middle of it. So you can see the scratches are knocking this area down, knocking this area down. So there'll be quite a bit more sanding to do here. And we'll start knocking down the high spots and make it all real nice. And so a lot of the filler just ends up on the floor. So I've finished sanding it as much as I can with this for now. You see we've got this starting to get really good over here, over here. It needs more fill. Now with a door like this, one could certainly make the case that it might have been better to find a replacement. However, finding a replacement is not always easy and then of course it involves shipping and by the time it gets to you it might be damaged again. But while it looks like we're putting a lot of filler here, we're still under the recommended amount of thickness of applying the filler. 
So it's more like a skim coat that's being applied across the whole thing. A little heavier in some spots, lighter in others, but effectively creating a nice surface again that is free of waves. Here you can see it is really starting to get feathered out and coming to form. I feel like I've done this before. So, um, this rear portion here is pretty much finished, but I've got some extra filler, and I'm just going to put a skin coat over the whole thing just to fill scratches and maybe pick up something that I didn't see. So we're just going to put real high pressure skim coat on there. Really we're just wetting it and wiping it off. Is what it looks like. So most of the time you want to always use a, uh, a block for sanding. But sometimes you get into contour areas where it just doesn't really get in there. You can work it a little bit, but so sometimes you just got to get yourself some sandpaper and just try to um, try to create the contour by hand. And you'll just have to feel it. There's really no good way around it. You'll just have to feel it. And then as much as you can, try to use the, the, the flat blocks. So this is the status of our bodywork. This is pretty well bodywork, core bodywork completed. Now we've got, of course, this door, which was, we'll just call it shopping cart door. <laughs> Must have gotten hit pretty hard or something. Um, had all kinds of waves. All of that is really gone now and that's what it took to do it it looks like a lot but it's a very thin coat of filler that's there and that's 
just what it took to make it perfect. Okay. And then on this fender, we had this dent here. So we've got that flared out. The hood, we had two, two dents. The fenders, we had some minor little dents here and there. This door, we had a a ding and a had a little problem under here, a little ding there, and then we had some damage to our rear flare. Dent here, there, dent there, and here's our rear lid with all the. Uh, Dents taken out here, and another one found right there. And so that's it. Okay. So the next thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to take um, some sandpaper um, that is a little finer than what I've last used. So I last used 80. Um, so I'm going to take some like 150 or... 200. I happen to have some 120 here, and that will be fine. This is designed for a orbital, but it's sticky and so will work. And I'm just going to take it like that, and then I'm just going to go over the general area around the repair. Okay, so for the next phase of this, I'm going to be using some uh, 400 grit sandpaper and basically cut it according to the size that I need. I'm going to be using a, a block sander, the same one that I was using before, but this time I'll be putting wet dry paper on it. So here's my setup for wet sanding. I've got my sandpaper, I've got a uh, five gallon bucket of water, clean water, I've cleaned it, I've cleaned the inside of the bucket uh, with, uh, with Dawn degreasing uh, dishwashing soap, and now you can add a little bit of uh, degreasing soap in there or you can just use a little bit of simple green. And what that's going to do is so that when we're sanding it, we're also cleaning it. So, and then I've got a, um, I've got just a, a, a bottle of uh, water. So when I'm sanding, if I need a little more water, I can spray that area. And so then the process, just make it wet and start sanding. And I'm going to be sanding all of the areas that I did not work on. Okay, so you might ask, is there a method to the sanding? And there is. It's, it's just like before. We're basically going to do this sort of X pattern. Where we keep the, the block normal to the X. We just sand it like this. You don't want to just do like this. This is that's not good. We want to be keeping the block level, and that way, whenever we sand, we are not rubbing into the body any sort of deformities. We're just uniformly sanding over the entire body. And we'll do this and then we'll let it dry and we'll see if we miss spots and also while you're sanding you want to look for any imperfections that you might might say like a little chip or something that you might need to work a little extra to feather out for instance if you'd found something like this 
you want to make sure that when you sand it that you feather it out nicely so that there's not really a uh, so that you can't really feel this that was a rock chip and I've just been sanding it sanding it enough so that you no longer feel the chip So, right there, just by wet sanding it, we found another uh, ding. This is a uh, an upward ding. So we're gonna have to beat that down and work that out. So as you can see, even when we're at the wet sanding phase, we are still potentially gonna have to go back to the body work phase. And this is something that I just did not see. So I want to stress that when you're sanding, even though you're going around these, these contours, you still want to use the block. Uh, you, you know, it's very tempting just to get a piece of sandpaper and start sanding this. But just use the block as much as you can. Even when you're getting into areas like this, you can get down here with the block and do pretty much most of it, right? So this ensures that you're not carving into the paint with your fingers and creating abnormalities. And then, so then another thing that you can do for the contours, like let's say we're doing this, so we can, we can do this as much as we can but we're still not going to be able to sand this little corner of it, right? So you can get these little foam sanding blocks, right? And they're a lot more flexible. And then what I like to do is just take the piece of uh, sanding paper that I've removed from there. And that becomes my new uh, sanding block for getting into places like this and even taking it like this and getting in there into those corners and crevices and getting into areas like this where you just kind of need, I'm holding the phone, I'm holding the, uh, the camera, so. But the idea is basically use this sanding block to get into, you know, one that, that bends around the contours and lets you get into all of these places that the block is really not going to get into. The block's going to do a lot, and you're going to be able to use it a lot, but for some little areas, you'll need a little foam block, and sometimes you'll just need your, your hand to get in there. Okay, so while I'm wet sanding here, I'm also doing a little bit of cleaning here. And uh, before I sand here, I'm gonna clean this area. Um, you know, we have washed the car before all this, but being that this is the engine compartment, um, I think it's wise to just go ahead and, and uh, clean all this with some simple green. And we're gonna open the lid and then we're gonna clean this area too. And that way we just have a good clean uh, areas here that are devoid of grease and also that we don't contaminate our um, sandpaper by uh, sanding in these areas and so on. And as an added precaution, I'll probably use an old piece of sandpaper to get in there and then discard that paper after I'm done. That way we don't spread grease, if there is any, to the other parts of the... Uh, body while we're sanding but one thing it it brings up is and one thing you need to start considering is where your your, your paint line is going to be in other words where if you're painting the body where are you going to end are you going to end here or are you going to bring it on all the way to here or i might want to paint all that i don't you know it depends on what um what level you're doing here but like uh this right here probably at the bottom 
or, or right here, it'll be a soft edge, so you won't really see a hard line, but that was more or less where it will be. So that's just one thing to start thinking about as you're sanding, and you should probably be thinking about that long ahead already, um, is where, you know, what's the scope of work, and where does it end, and how, how you know, are you going to get into here, etc.? Are you going to paint into there? Are you going to remove the hoods? And one thing you want to also do is run your sandpaper along all of your edges. And especially if you have any chips, you want to work them out. And so here, as I'm sanding this uh, window frame, I do happen to notice a small amount of rust. And I'm just going to, this looks like very benign rust, but I'm going to just sand it out as best I can. Hopefully we'll be able to just eliminate that with just some some wet sanding here. Yeah, it looks like it's gonna it's gonna all go away and then um, the sealer and then some yeah, the sealer will just take care of that once we sand that out. Another thing that's helpful to do is when you're sanding, first just sand it quickly and lightly. Just go over everything just kind of briefly and then wipe it down. And then once, once it's dried, you'll be able to see um, if there are any... Um, dimples you know like if you got any dings that you just hadn't noticed so once the uh, the body is flat again you know you can tell oh that spot is is a little shiny there is it just because i missed sanding it or does it actually have a dent or something or something like that for instance right here that there is a little like a little door ding so you can feel it so i'll try to correct that by just some more vigorous sanding and if that doesn't work it then we'll need a little filler right there so the purpose of wet sanding at this point is not only to provide a uh, a rough surface for the the paint to adhere to but it's also to to correct any imperfections and to really make it as as flat as possible and that way you'll I'll be able to get uh, a very flat um, lay down of your clear and, and your paint when you when you come to paint this. And this stage is very, very important because the, the more work you put into this stage, the better your, your paint has the potential to look. And that's why you often hear people talk about it's, it's, it's the prep work. Uh, is where the um, the main um, potential to have a, a good looking paint job goes. It is the prep work, the amount of time that you put into it, and um, dealing with any any problems that that you find. Get it all worked out. Get the body nice and flat, and um, and it's it's that's your best. It has the highest likelihood of having a, a good looking um, finish when you're when you're all finished with it. So if if you look here, um, I'm shining the light here. Now you can see certain areas that are still glossy and certain areas that are um, that are sanded down, right? So to go over those, you know, we can we can tell like what's going on here. We're just getting rid of the um, the orange peel. There's just natural orange peel in the paint, and we're we're flattening all that down. So when you do flatten that down, you know you're gonna probably have some orange peel in your in your in your new paint when you spray it on. But at least you're not starting out with orange peel here. So we're getting rid of that. Um, I did also notice. See this process also exposes things like this why why all of a sudden here are we getting a um, little white spot here well it's because there's a little high spot there 
So um, I'm gonna continue to sand that. It's very, you almost can't feel it at all. Um, and we're gonna see if, if that high spot can be just flattened out with just by sanding, or if we need to tap that down a little bit. But at least it's exposed it for us, right? So other areas that you might wanna look at, you know, once you sand it all, and I'm gonna sand it again with another pass with the, uh, with the, uh, the block, and all of this little little shiny bits should start going away. And if they're not, then you real then then you do have a little dent there or something that needs to be addressed. I believe I've got a little dent right here. Um, but again, sanding it will will expose that and and help you help you remedy that. Identifying it, you know, because a lot of times it's just hard to find little dents but then you know you don't want to have to paint your car and then realize oh man there's a dent that i didn't pick up i have picked up another one here that i did not see um and i'm not sure why i didn't see that one but i didn't but um that's just a little a little scuff i guess it looked like a scuff and then when i actually started sanding it out it is actually a little dent so um we will uh straighten all that out and also, you know, any little chips, try to try to feather them out using the block. Okay, so we've tapped this one down here. Now I'm just gonna use a little bit of uh, uh, 80 grit, or just to rough it up a little bit. Same goes for this little, any of these other little dents that I've located here. Just gonna rough it up. So we know where to put the filler and we have the filler has something to adhere to this little guy right here. Okay, so for our final, hopefully this will be our final application of body filler and we just barely need a little bit, probably this is even too much. But um, went ahead and uh, just go ahead and mix it up. And then we're going to take this and we're going to apply it onto the body. And we're going to apply it on almost like a skim coat, but we're going to put a little less pressure so that we don't end up having to apply another coat of filler. We're just going to apply it and... Oh. Somebody took my uh, somebody took my clean blades that I have. That's unfortunate. So I will have to make quick work of this, and it'll be fine. Just guess I should have made sure that I had one handy. I thought they were here. Someone took one. Okay. So, now we're just gonna go ahead and apply this first bit here on this area. Just need a little bit right there. So I could go like that, but that then we're probably not, it's probably not enough to fill it. So I'm gonna just put it on a little, with a little less pressure, pressure than that. That way I can sand away this stuff here. Okay, and then, uh, like I say, there's just a few of these areas that that have this issue. We have little little dings that we didn't find until wet sanding. This one is okay. We've got a little one here. Barely anything, but it is there is something there. If I pull it hard, you can see it's right there. I'm just gonna put it on a little lighter, give us something to sand off. And look, we've got another one there, don't we? So, I'm gonna take my little piece of sandpaper real fast. 
and just give it something to grab onto there. And that should su suffice for that little dent. And we have one here. And we'll just barely lay it on. And we've got another one down here. Right here. We'll just put a light coat there. Yeah, we'll do it over. Don't want to be sanding too much, but I don't want to not have enough. So, okay, and so. That is it for any new dents that I've found. Maybe we'll find more, but that seems to be all for now. So another thing was um, what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna sand here this door and I'm just gonna sand just the corner edge of this um, part right here and maybe just slightly into this side of it. And the reason is because I'm not going to be painting this, right? And, you know, I could I could put a tape line right here, but that would involve me opening this door when painting is going on, and I don't want to do that. There's going to be... All of this will be taped up right here, and these doors likely be closed when I paint it. And so I'm just going to want to paint it this part, but I want to be able to adhere when I paint... I want the paint to adhere to the corner as well. And then I'll have what's called a soft edge right here. So you won't really notice that. But we don't want to really rough this up. We, we want to rough it up kind of like this. Just sort of on the corner of it. And maybe a little bit into the, uh, into the, the other uh, surface there. But more or less this is how we're going to sand this portion here and we'll definitely have to clean all this before we paint or else this sort of dust can get in there it's going to be very important because when you when you actually spray your high pressure gun is going to be coming in here and it's going to push air into there so any dust that's in there will likely get kicked up and back into your paint Okay, so here's what a skim coat does. I've got some very minor little uh, impressions here and here. And basically just take the filler and run it with a lot of pressure. Basically just fill in the gaps. That's all we're doing. We're not trying to build up, we're just trying to fill in. Okay, so at this point, we are basically ready to, uh, we're finished with the bodywork, and now we're going to lay on some primer surfacer on all the areas that we did bodywork on. But before we do that, we're going to want to clean up any uh, sanding dust that was left on there. Okay, so we are getting ready now to uh, 
put our primer surfacer on over our repair areas. It has been um, raining and so on for the last um, several, well, over a week around now. And it's been sort of delaying this project. I don't like to usually uh, shoot primer outside, um, inside actually, because it just, you know, makes your, uh, your space dirty. But I'm going to go ahead and uh, do that in this case. I'll be wetting down the floors um, to help with that a little bit. And I'll try to be as minimal as possible when I'm putting this stuff on. And I'll open the door when I'm when I am actually shooting it on there. So that's that's where we're at, and here's the state of the car as it is ready for having some uh, primer surfacer applied to it. And now I will um, give you a look at the, um, the setup. So here's basic the basic setup. I've got my primer gun. It is not a high-end gun. It is just a a gun that I uh, bought on recommendation of someone. That you don't really need a good high-end gun for primer, but you should have a separate gun for primer. And judging by how dirty it is, that makes sense, right? I've got my primer surfacer, and I've got the activator. I've got a mixing cup. I've got. Uh, some lacquer thinner for cleanup, and I've got my my brush cleaning kit there. I've got some paper towels, and um, so with that, and I've got the um, I've got wheel covers over the areas where I'll be shooting close to, and I've got a piece of cardboard that I'm going to use when I shoot. I'm not going to mask up this car because I'm only going to be shooting in certain areas small enough to hopefully avoid um, overspray. Um, so we'll, we'll have to be careful of getting overspray on spots that we don't want to get it on, right? But that's what we're going to do. And we're going to get to it right now. We've got our um, our gun setup compressor is charged up. We're going to be shooting this. Typically, you have to shoot this at a little higher pressure so it lays down nice. And uh, once I get that pressure dialed in, and uh, then we're ready to go. And it's usually you don't want to get it like orange peely on. You want this stuff to go on nice so you don't have to sand as much. And it's worth spending the extra time to get your pressure dialed in and your viscosity. Sometimes if this is too thick, then you want to thin it down a little bit with some reducer.
Okay. I'm going to allow that to flash and for about 10, 15 minutes and then I'll apply another coat. Okay, so we've uh, allowed our primer surfacer to dry overnight. And uh, so now we are ready to start sanding that primer surfacer. And I've got a uh, new piece of 400 grit wet dry paper and I've got my bucket of water, new bucket of water. And we're ready to just block sand like crazy. And we're going to do the same things we did before. Our basic X pattern as much as we can, everywhere we can. And we're going to make these surfaces nice and smooth. Right now you can still kind of see the a little bit of the bodywork, the sanding. This is sort of the labor intensive part of it. But um, tempting to use some sort of machinery to do it, but I prefer to just go ahead and do it by hand. And truth be told, it helps to uh, work off some of the uh, excess pounds from the holidays, if you know what I mean. So we shall uh, begin again and do another pass of sanding and see uh, where we're at after that. Thank you. 
Sometimes the sanding will expose the underlying body filler. This is good because it shows us that the bodywork wasn't perfect. But now that we have made it perfect, we do need to apply a light coat of filler in order to seal that bodywork once again. And when you have waves and stuff, even if they're very small, subtle waves, just put a layer of that filler over everything and then block sand it with as large a block that you can and it should come out nicely then. And this is the block that I like to use for, for things like this. Whenever I'm concerned about possible waviness, I like to use a little bit larger block. And you know, the larger the block, the more likely you're gonna get it you know, all, all flat. And uh, well, you know, when you're sanding, a larger block has more area to rest. And so it has uh, a greater chance of correcting um, high spots and um, doing it, averaging it out as you go. Okay, so that's our car right now. So that's with our second coat of uh, primer surfacer over select spots. And uh, we sanded those spots down. I'm gonna let all this dry and then I'm gonna come and inspect it to see uh, how much more sanding I wanna do. And here I just had so little to do, I didn't want to get my spray gun dirty again. Okay, so now we are ready to go with our final sanding of 400. So we're going to use 400 grit sandpaper on all of the primered areas. Now remember, we already sanded the whole car once with 400. So we don't need to really do the red areas again. We're just going to focus on the primered areas. Get them to the 400 grit level. And uh, that will be good for... For the time being I'm, I'm sanding here with 400 grit but prior to paint everything will be taken to the 600 grit level I don't sand it immediately to 600 grit because I want to have one last chance to remove any dirt that's accumulated on the body prior to painting and I do that maybe a day before painting Okay, so there we have it. We finished our sanding of uh, 400 grit, the whole car. So um, I'm gonna let it dry and then we'll uh, kind of inspect things and then we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so now we're heading into the final stretch. We're gonna do our final sanding. We've got a bucket of soapy water. We've got two blocks with 600 grit paper. And then we're gonna sand the whole car. And we're gonna do a very thorough job of it. And we're gonna go over every spot that we already sanded and look for any spots that have not yet been sanded. And uh, we're just gonna make the whole car um, to the uh, 600 grit level. If it hasn't been said yet in this video, I'm going to say it now. And it applies for the whole process. You're trying to create a grease-free surface. So the closer you get to paint time, the more important that is. Well, throughout the whole process, I always try to keep my hands washed before I come out and put the car, hands on the car. So as you're doing this work and you know, you, sometimes you have to take a break, you never want to like go have a cheeseburger and then come back and then don't wash your hands and then touch this car. Absolutely not. Another thing you don't want to do is while you're in the garage, or even if you have the car outside, you don't want to spray any WD-40. It gets in the air, 
and it will atomize and it will land on the car. That's oil all over your body. So on this one, actually on both of these bumpers, I had a little mistake happen. This one got chipped um, while buffing, so I had to smooth that out. So that's going to mean that this whole thing is going to have to be reshot. So I'm sanding this whole thing down with 600. This one had a very, very tiny boo-boo here. But I went ahead and just sanded it out, smoothed it out also. So on this one, I'm only going to paint the top portion of this bumper. Because this has the rubber that goes into the, the middle of it there. Okay, so the reason we brought the car out is uh, first and foremost, we uh, I wanted to wash it down. So I washed it down. Um, gotten most of the uh, sanding residue off and so uh, I wanted to more or less spray uh, get any loose um, just excess sanding dust kind of make it wet again and try to break it free so that's the first thing the second thing is to um, to get some space in the garage and then uh, to start cleaning the garage so that I can start preparing the garage for the the paint of the car. So pre-clean is basically your final cleaning of the body to remove any grease or whatever um, before paint. The way you put it on is you put it on with um, you make yourself a, a paper towel wet with it, wipe it on and then immediately take a dry one and wipe it off. And you don't rub it in, you wipe it off in one direction. And you do that on, over the whole car. So you're basically trying to wet out any grease, move it off, and wipe it off is the idea there. So we're going to do that to the whole car now. It's sort of the last chance to get anything off of it. My gun is sputtering, and that's because the uh, the nozzle is not tightened all the way. It didn't really affect the, the the spray, but it's more of an annoyance. Notice that the red paint covers extremely well. If this had been a yellow car, we wouldn't be able to do it like this because it would take so many coats of the yellow paint to hide the fact that there is primer in certain spots that it really wouldn't work. You'd really just have to paint the whole thing primer or white first.
So this is how it looks after having just one coat applied everywhere. Look. Think I messed up? It's just burnt, but dark. It needs to be painted. It's so spotted on it. Yeah. Go ahead and hit it. No, no, no more. No more. Let it dry. The small parts can often be troublesome, and this is admittedly not the best mounting of these items. Now this car took about three or four coats of base coat to get coverage everywhere. Now on to the clear. Here we're using a Chromax clear coat. Okay, here we are the next day after painting and we have the car here is um, 
definitely dry to the touch. Um, everything came out very nice. Paint laid down very nice. Not a lot of orange peel. So it looks really good. We do have some, some dust nibs that will have to be addressed. Um, of course, that's what happens if you have a, if you don't have a, a booth, you know, so that will have to be taken care of. Maybe a little bit of dry spray right here. Not too bad though. Overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Looks really good. So we'll let it dry a little more and then we'll start working on some of these dust nibs to get them out. And that will be the next step in the process. So how hard is it to actually paint a car? Well, it does take some practice and you should learn on a test panel, preferably a large hood or and a fender. This took about a full day of taping, then painting. When you're actually painting, you want to become like a robot, lay down the paint evenly with consistent overlap. You have to practice so you build up a feel so you don't make many runs. Then painting metallic paints takes even more practice. But there is something very satisfying about it when you get it all done. Like a bigger version of the 124th scale model kits I used to build. <laughs>